Hi, I am Anupama Kondaya from the Organizational Behavior and HRM area at IIM Bangalore. The United Nations has set health and well-being for all as a sustainable development goal. Not even half of the people in the world have access to essential healthcare services. The pandemic has further disrupted this scenario with India being one of the worst hit, especially rural areas. How can we surmount these challenges and ensure health and well-being for all then? The Indian state sees medical pluralism or the coexistence of differing medical traditions and practices as one of the answers. A high-level expert group for universal healthcare suggested that the last mile of healthcare delivery in India should be plugged using alternate or indigenous systems of medicine. However, these indigenous systems have been facing continued contestations from Western medicine for over two centuries. Once the dominant systems in India, indigenous systems were labelled as alternate during the colonial era with the advent and state-supported diffusion of Western practices. In this context, my research looks at the indigenous system of Ayurveda and its encounters with Western medicine during the colonial and post-colonial period. In the 19th century, Western medicine received explicit state support while indigenous medicine, including Ayurveda, was left out. But instead of dying out, Ayurveda survived, modernized, and has a thriving market today according to industry reports. How did this happen? How did Ayurveda survive and modernize? I seek to answer these questions in my research to help better understand how we can support medical pluralism to ensure universal health care. In my doctoral dissertation, I first look into how and why companies manufacturing Ayurvedic pharmaceuticals came to be established in 19th century India. Then, I look at how Ayurvedic drugs came to be recognized and included in the regulated medicinal drug category in the year 1964. Finally, I look at how we can philosophically understand the modernization of Ayurveda. I'm conducting a historical case study using a variety of archival data sources to derive theoretical insights for category emergence and category dynamics. One of the key insights from my study is that entrepreneurs, businesses and industries are not always driven by rational and economic motives as we usually assume. Entrepreneurs that help establish new industries are also driven by emotions and values while establishing businesses. Also, efforts to impose a paradigm on people paradoxically lead to the strengthening of those paradigms through a confrontation with one's values and efforts towards preservation and promotion. Although contestations between systems continue to this day, insights from how Ayurveda survived, modernized and derived support seem to have insights for the larger debate on pluralism. Thank you so much.